I'm a great lover of eating fish and shellfish, and a very big part of sea fishing to me is the meal from something you've sourced yourself. There's nothing quite like sitting down to the dinner table to eat some fish or shellfish that you've caught yourself, you've dealt with it yourself, you've prepared it, cooked it, you know exactly how fresh it is, or if it's from frozen, you know exactly how fresh it was when it was frozen. Now most times when I go out fishing, I have a main target species in mind. But occasionally I'll have, to, I'll have trips which are basically for the dinner table. So I've got no, although I've got preset plans of the type of fishing I'm going to do, I've got no preset plans of what I might catch. It's, it's very much a case of trying different methods and catching what's out here, seeing what's out here and, and, and hopefully catching it and trying to get a mixed bag. So that's what we're doing today. Before I actually get and do the fishing, I've got some pots to put out because, as I said, shellfish, if I can get it, is very much uh, on the menu. So I'm just going to put a small pot out close to shore and what I'm hoping to get in that pot is velvet swimming crab. But then put a couple of larger pots out, a bit further out, and at this time of year what I'm most likely to get is spider crab. But you never know. So we'll do that and once I've got the pots out, I'll talk a, bit, a little bit more about the, the fishing I'm actually going, going to start with and the general plan for the, for, for the day. Right, just about ready to put the first pot down and this is one of those little pots and to be honest with you they're only, I find them they're only any good for small crabs like velvet swimming crabs or if you want some crabs for bait they're, then I've, in the video I've done kite fishing for shellfish I talked about these they're no, they're no good for things like brown crab large brown crab and spider crab you might you might just about get a legal sized lobster in there but they're, they're, they're fine for small crabs but the only problem is they, they don't last two minutes the zips the zips all seize up and break but they're cheap enough and for, for what I want to use it for today that's absolutely fine so I'm just dropping this close to shore but very very close to some rough kelpie ground and hopefully we'll get something all right, now to put the main pots out and I'm putting these out a bit further out in deeper water and I'm putting them right as close as I can to a reef which is rock and kelp and I'm just monitoring the GPS at the moment and I'm just drifting towards the reef and I just want to drop it just before I actually go over the reef. I don't want to drop it right in the rough ground because I could lose the pot. So also looking at the fish finder as well and I can just and I'll see how the grain the ground changes. So that's the idea is try and get it as near as possible to the rough ground. And down it goes. We'll do the same with the ne the next pot and then hopefully And the thing we put when you put pots out, of course it's hit and miss, ideally you should put them out overnight. But I usually put them out at the start of the fishing session and then collect them when I on the way back in. So they'll be out for a, for a good six or seven hours today. Now I'm putting these pots out at low water and therefore I've got to put enough line out to account for the rise of the tide. But we're only on a very, very small neap tide today so there's not going to be much much movement. Well the plan for the fishing today is to mix up bait fishing, with fishing with bait on the bottom, with lure fishing. Now later on I'm going to be fishing, doing some lure fishing on a reef which is about a mile off, offshore. But rather than paddle out to this reef, I've got the tide and a little bit of breeze today which will actually take me not exactly to the reef but near enough 
So what I'm going to do is drift out to it and while I'm drifting out is put a couple of rods out with bait on the bottom and what I might pick up, I might pick up a flatty, I might pick up a dogfish which I actually enjoy eating and then monitor the fish finder while I'm drifting with the two rods out with bait on the bottom. Monitor the fish finder and see if there's any shoals of mackerel and then hopefully pick up some mackerel. And then when I get within the vicinity of the reef, change tactics and drift over the reef with, with some lures and maybe pick up some pollock and cod. So that's the plan, but the, these sort of days are very much improvise and if something doesn't work, try something else and just try and, as I say, maximise chances of at least coming back with something. Well, this is the first fish of the session. Place. Well that's the first fish, a place, and I quickly measured that and it, it not only meets the minimum size limit, it meets my size limit. And that is one thing you've got to be mindful if you're taking fish for the dinner table is to make sure that they meet the minimum, the legal minimum landing size limit. And in this case we're placing Cornwall, it's 27 centimetres. But personally for place and, and many other fish I have my own personal size limits and to me 27 centimetres is too small for a place and I have a, my size limit is 30 centimetres and this one measures 31 so it's, it's over my, not only the legal size limit but my size limit. The other thing to think about when you're taking fish for the dinner table or at least the way I like to do it is to dispatch the fish quickly rather than just leaving them to die gasping uh, for oxygen. And what I do, once I know that it's big enough, I dispatch it even before I take the hook out, as I did this fish. And what I use is a priest, and this is basically a homemade priest. And all I've done is cut a section, a length from a quite a thick, solid broom handle. And this does the, does the job well for most fish I catch. But there, yeah, I mean, it's just personal. But, but that's why I like to do it is just, if I'm going to take it, give them a, put them out of their misery using the priest here before I even take the hook, the hook out. And I just feel more comfortable, comfortable dealing with the fish that way. For those of you that are interested in rigs, and the rig, the rig I'm using for this bottom, bottom fishing uh, as I'm drifting along here and the rig that just caught that place and has caught place for me in the past. I've recently done a video about, about the rig I'm using if, and if for those of you interested in it I'll put it up in the top right hand corner of the screen now. Of course another thing you need to think about when you're taking fish home for the dinner table is to keep them cool. I mean I could, I'll be out here for several hours today and what I don't want, it's a sunny day, I don't want the fish out in the open. I need to keep them cool. And I use different methods depending on what, what kayak I'm using. But on this kayak I've got the hatch there at the front which I use as fish storage. And I just shuffle forward in my seat a little bit and pop them in there. I'll either have some ice blocks in there or, in this case, I've got a couple of hessian sacks. And they're known as burlap, sack, burlap sacks in the States. And basically what you do is you wet the sack and as, the, as it dries it cools, it's known as evaporative cooling. And it's a really convenient way of, of keeping, keeping fish cool. And that's the, that's the method I use on, on this kayak.
Well, there it is. That's a lovely place. And that's one of the reasons that I do see fishing, because that's going to be absolutely delicious to eat. And it's going to be a real, real treat for the dinner table. So apart from the environment it takes you to, which is absolutely marvellous, and we're blessed here in Cornwall, to sit down to a meal maybe on a on a Saturday evening and, and eat something like that is 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 an absolute bonus. Well, I was just about to give up with the with the mackerel, but as I've drifted further out here, just getting close to this reef, I saw the gannets working. And as you see, the gannets working, that's always always a good sign that there's a some mackerel around. got our first mackerel which I'm re <coughs> really pleased about because mackerel is still one of my favorite fish to eat absolutely delicious there's not there's not much can beat there's not much can beat fresh mackerel well the mackerel is showing now and I've got a nice herring there as well so that's fantastic well, after picking up a few mackerel and herring, I'm now on the reef in the hope of maybe picking up some pollock and, and possibly cod. Now, a little tip I can give you when it comes to taking Pollock home for the dinner table. And the first is to gut it as soon as possible. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna gut this now before I even put it, put, it, put it away to keep cool. And the other tip I can give you, for those of you that are not really keen on Pollock, my wife and I have grown to really enjoy it. But what we do, we fillet it but then we skin it, we cook it with the skin off. Because I found, and other people may have found different, that for some reason the skin of Pollock slightly taints the meat. And I find it's much, much better eaten if it's skinned. So there you go, if you try that, if you catch Pollock and you, you think, oh, you're not that keen on, on them compared to cod, then uh, try them skinned. Gut them as quick as possible and then when you cook them, cook them skinless. Decided to call it a day on this reef. The fishing's just a bit too slow with the pollock. So we're gonna head on in a bit closer to shore now to another reef, just have a drift over it and see if there's any pollock and cod on that. And then maybe we'll, we'll put the bait rods back down again and also see if I can pick up a few more mackerel.
Well, that's it. Going to call it a day with the fishing now and head on in and see if there's anything in the pots. Had a few more mackerel, but nothing more with the bait rods on the bottom. But got a good mix of fish, and I'm quite pleased considering it's a very, very small tide today. But hopefully there's at least one keeper crab in one of the pots as an added bonus. Well, up comes the first pot and we have success. That one's definitely a keeper. I'm not sure sure about that one. I'll have to measure it that it meets the size limit. But yeah, spider crab, they... I love them. My wife and I, we love them to eat. Um, just a shame there's so many of them that migrate in close to shore this time of year. Um, but unfortunately, most of them go abroad. Right, so we'll deal with these and check the size limits and then go and pull the other pot. But that's, that's fantastic. So this is, this is what I mean by fishing for the dinner table. It's, it's basically just giving yourself as much chance as possible using different methods and trying to get as many different species as you can. Um, and then improvising. Sometimes things work, sometimes things don't work. Could, could be another time where I put two pots out or three pots out for nothing. But, it, but it's always worth trying because it's just if you course if you like eating shellfish it just adds that little bit of satisfaction and and the thought of, of the lovely meal that that I'm gonna have from certainly that crab I'm not sure about that crab but we'll see well there's the second pot and once again a couple of a couple of nice spider crab so the other two were both both over the legal size limit so we've got four spider crab but there's a slight problem if you put pots out for personal use there is a take limit and it's two per day of legal size limit so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna keep the two biggest ones and put put the smaller ones back well unfortunately absolutely nothing in the small pot but that's the, that's the way it goes well that's it now, I'm back in now and I ended up with a good mixed bag of fish although it was hard work. But we've got a nice mix there with the bonus of the couple of crab and the, and the two, of course there was two crab that I couldn't keep, had to go back. So we've got some pollock in there, we've got plaice, we've got some mackerel and some herring and the crab. So all in all, although it was hard work, it ended up, ended up a good day. So just got to get these home now and, and deal with them. And one thing I can really recommend for transporting your fish is one of these flexi tubs. They're, they're absolutely brilliant. Well, that's it. I'm home now and I've got all the fish sorted. Got our lovely couple of spider crab there, that, which are already been cooked. And if you've never tried spider crab before I can, and you like crab, I can promise you they're absolutely delicious. Really sweet meat. And my wife and I, we're going to eat those over the next few days. And they're going to be a real treat. Got a couple of um, pollock fillets which, which we're going to have tonight and as I mentioned earlier I've skinned them and I find the pollock is far better skinned and they're going to be absolutely delicious. Got a lovely mackerel which is one of my favourite fish and I'm going to have that fresh tonight and that's going to be a little, little first course and that's going to be brilliant. Nothing much can beat fresh mackerel and of course we've got our wonderful place and that's going to stay fresh in the fridge and I'm going to have that tomorrow evening when we've got a bit more time to do something really nice with it but I'm, I've also kept out four fresh mackerel and tomorrow I'm going to smoke those I've got myself a smoker and um, I'm going to have a go at some do-it-yourself smoking so that, that's going to be fun and then, of course, with the rest of the fish, we're going to freeze it down tonight. Got some pollock fillets there, got a herring, got a mackerel and the other place. Now, I've mentioned before in a video about mackerel, how people think they're no good from frozen. Well, we all know there's nothing better than, than fresh mackerel like this one that I'm going to have tonight. But 
if you've got an excess of mackerel and you've caught it and you've kept it nice and cool on the kayak, you get home, you deal with it, you gut it and you freeze it on the same day, I can promise you they are still absolutely excellent to eat. Little tip I can give you about keeping fish in the fridge to eat fresh maybe the next day or the day after and that's what I've done here with this this mackerel here and we'll do the same with the place and that is to cover cover it with cling film now if you cover it with cling film and pop it in the fridge they really retain their their color and their moisture and don't dry out and that 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 really makes a difference to keeping your fish a looking good and keeping it nice and fresh keep it in the fridge and just cover the dish with cling film well that's it this is a very very big part of sea fishing to me uh, as I said in the introduction there is is going out there and getting a reward for your effort and I stuck I got up at five o'clock this morning and go out and like I did today with no sort of preset plan of, of, of what I might catch no target species in other words but just go out and try different methods and just try and get as many fish as you can and as many different fish as you can as long as you as long as you stick to the legal landing size limits it's far better as far as I'm concerned to do that rather than particularly if you like e eating fish if you don't eat fish fair enough and you're a catch and re release angler and you don't eat fish that's fine but far better to do this and as far as I'm concerned and put them back and then go and buy fish I and mean, I, I, I dread to think what the value of of this fish will would be so once again I hope you found that useful and many many thanks for watching <laughs>